Hello everyone and welcome to some Mr. FPGA news. This week we will be talking about Groovy Mr. and Mr. Cast updates, Sega Saturn and Nintendo 64 Core updates, Mystex updates, and more. Also, check out my sponsor, Mr. Add-ons, a place where you can get all your Mr. Knees. Things like full Mr. Setups, IO boards, accessories, and more. Now let's get to the news. Shane Lynch has posted a couple of updates to Mr. Cast that fixes a few things. One update now allows commas to be used as decimal points. Very helpful for our friends in Europe. Another update significantly reduced the CPU usage. According to Shane, CPU usage has been down up to 50% on his computer. If you don't know what Mr. Cast is, it is a Windows program that allows you to cast your PC screen to a CRT via the Mr. Most of the analog I.O. boards for Mr. output an 18-bit color signal through the VGA port. Because of this, you experience color banding with high color content. It isn't really noticeable with the 8 and 16-bit generation of systems, but once you get to the Sega Saturn and PlayStation generation, this can become an issue. And if you're running video content through Mr. Cast, banding will also be an issue. But there is a solution. A while back, I reported that a Mr. FPGA forum member named Rollset worked over the PlayStation and N64 cores to output 24-bit video through the 18-bit VGA port by adding a method called PWM. PWM works by quickly alternating between two different color signals to get a color in between. Recently, Ruleset has forked the Groovy Mr. core to support PWM. I've tried it and it's a huge improvement. Without PWM, banding will instantly be noticeable and distracting. However, when using the PWM core, it's significantly reduced. I was pixel peeping to find any banding. And it also depends on the quality of content you're running. The higher quality content, the less banding, if any, there will be. It's also possible that different displays will also vary in image quality. Then later in the week, Groovy Mister was updated to support the PWM option. And in addition to that, a new native LZ4 blitting inside the FPGA was added. LZ4 is a method of compression. To make use of this feature, applications that access Groovy Mister must be updated. And that also includes Mister Cast. But Shane Lynch is working on getting it updated. Anyway, here's how developer Calamity explains this new update. On Discord, Calamity says, in fact, it's going to be a little more simple. Instead of compressing block by block, you'll compress the whole frame and send it by MTU chunks like in raw mode. So this looks like a more efficient way of doing things. Wizzle has posted a free Patreon article that explains how to integrate Tap2 and Remote on the Mr. FPGA using some new commands that were implemented. These commands can help trigger some events like controlling music playback. Also, Wizzle made a shop listing for a do-it-yourself tap to reader, which has everything required to build a NFC reader except the NFC module. However, the NFC module is easily obtainable separately. In more tap to news, Aitor Gomez Garcia is soon releasing an update to his forked Mr. Main that has tap to integration. It includes a custom loader with cover fusion located in a folder for them. And it is also working with ROM selection from the menu. Bedroom Ninja also introduced an upcoming 3D printable case for NFC readers that is modeled after a Commodore 64 floppy drive. An announcement will be made soon when the files are available on printables. Ario Aces also showed off some awesome Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive Tap 2 designs for NFC cards, perfect for loading 16-bit Sega games. And if you want to see a good overview of the Tap 2 project, check out the Verge's article on the web. It's awesome to see the project getting this attention. Uber Yoji recently released a boot ROM animation for the Nintendo 64 core. You can obtain this boot ROM now and more for other consoles if you enable Uber Yoji's boot ROMs and update all. Two CPU bugs were fixed in the Nintendo 64 core. These fixes stopped the Neon 64 NES emulator from crashing in the core. While playing NES games on the N64 core is of little use, getting these bugs fixed could very well help getting other games working, therefore increasing the accuracy of the core. And another super useful feature has been added, an optional HDMI output mode that allows you to display 480i games in full 480p 60Hz will now be available in the core. This will eliminate any combing artifacts and a deinterlacer won't be required. 
Hans Bayer sent over a new revision of the Mystex PCB board for fabrication. Improvements made to the board are external power buttons and power switch connectors, signal integrity, ESD protection, test points, better headphone connector, USB docking points, Raspberry Pi LED, and analog inputs. If you don't know what Mystex is, it's a fork of Mr. whose goal is to be able to run cores on different FPGA chips and hard processor systems. Hans also posted a video showing off a fully built Mystex device running several cores. The Mystex is using an FPGA that's three times the size of the DE10 Nano and only costs $100. You will also need a $17 Orange Pi Zero and a $50 baseboard, but that still puts you under $200 for an entire Mystex setup. The games being shown running in the video are Wonder Boy, Fantasy Zone, and Dig Dug. While these are not games that would make use of such a large FPGA chip, getting advanced arcade games or consoles working on Mystex isn't really the goal now. It's more important to get the project fully functional and running current cores. At the moment, I believe there are two FPGA boards that are supported on Mystex, which are completely different from the Cyclone 5 that's on the DE10 Nano. If you want to help support the development of this project, Hans has a Patreon where you can show your support. Hans is using all the proceeds to fund additional developers to help port cores to the Xilinx FPGAs. The Game Boy MIDI core is going to be updated to add the noise channel and allow individual patches per pulse channel. If you're a musician and like to create chip tunes, then try out the Game Boy MIDI core. It allows you to connect a MIDI instrument to your mister and use this core as a synthesizer that's powered by the Game Boy Sound hardware. Here's a reminder for Mr. FPGA owners with analog pockets. You can update your analog pockets firmware in Update All by enabling the feature. There's currently a new analog pocket firmware available, and with the feature enabled on your Mr. FPGA, you can plug in your analog pocket and have it updated to the latest firmware. In the quest for more accurate audio for Capcom CPS games, Botego along with Artemio have been looking at the effect of the Capcom CPS filter. Otego says he understands the limitation of the current approach used and is working towards a more accurate replica of the filter. Also, Otego plans to update a whole bunch of cores with new filter information, which will change how sound feels in these cores. Other Otego updates include a version of the New Zealand story that sports three Z80 CPUs is now supported. The arcade game Kabuki Z is going to be supported soon. A bug was fixed in Black Tiger where the logo was remaining visible when it should not be an outrun problem where the screen is visible while updating is solved, and a sound bug in Section Z and Legendary Wings was fixed. If you head over to Hotego's Patreon, you will get a lot of details regarding information on how audio filters work on arcade hardware. And on top of that, you get early access to beta cores. This week's Sega Saturn updates include VDP-1 fixes that helped out Burning Rangers, VDP-2 fixes which helped Sakura Wars, SCU fixes for Pandemonium Speed, SMPC fixes that helped out Darkseed, SCSCP fixes that added internal registers reset, and the key on off trigger was reworked. Finally, SH7604 fixes which helped Slayer's Royal and Assault Suit Lanos 2. So that's it for this episode. I provided links to all my sources in the description. Make sure to also check out RetroRGB.com to see my Mr. News videos in block form and to get more retro related content and if possible, support them on Patreon too. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you can get notified of future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll speak to you next time.